Welcome back to the shop. Today's video is a sort of a takeoff of Scout Crafter's video. He talked about crush washers, which is very interesting and very just, just uh, timely for me. Actually, a little too late to be honest, but I was working on this cart that I got a while ago. The Vestile, I think is the brand, and it's a hydraulic lift cart. It was leaking. I don't know if I can get this, but there's a, a captured o-ring somewhere down there in, in that fitting and without disassembling this whole cart it's just I you know I like making videos but I'm not going to disassemble this whole thing because it's very dangerous it's got a lot of impingement points where you can just cut your fingers off if you're not careful and it's raining and I can't anyway I just get full of like excuses today but the the hydraulic gaskets in there had initially just had an o-ring and this is different than, than Scott Crafter's video in the sense that that o-rings and crush gaskets are similar but different uh, so the o-rings are different in 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 kind than the crush washers because they they don't really have any strength in terms of of being blown out and that was the problem with this cart the the o-ring God, I wish I had a picture of it. The O-ring had split effectively. It's a horrible design. Some Chineseium fittings in there, but it had a small, a small fitting, a small O-ring that had blown out, and I didn't want to go through the same problem again. So I ended up buying what they call a constrained O-ring. Dowdy washer kit. I don't know if Dowdy means anything, but these are metal seals with a rubber liner on the inside and the rubber liner unlike a crush washer is a little bit larger than the steel so when you tighten it down it becomes like an o-ring with a limiting I, I, I mean you can see what I'm looking at there but the intersection is is the the inside is all plastic so it's like an o-ring but but better in, in my guess in, in, in the instance of this hydraulic application I also think that a crush washer would have worked in, in, the, in the application of this cart however you can see that there's that added benefit of the o-ring in there and it, in this case this has got some some wackadoo sizes that aren't quite metric and aren't quite standard so the, the copper and I thought it was just absolutely amazing the annealing thing that, if you haven't seen Scott Crafter's crush washer video go watch that but I thought that was quite interesting that you could anneal the copper but then you also got the, you know, a multitude of different types of things. Here's a, a nylon washer kit, and I don't know how this would work in terms of heat. But you've got to be a little bit careful in the sense that sometimes washers aren't only for fluids. You've got isolating washers for electrical components that just simply isolate things from one another. And I don't have a great example in front of me, but, uh, but there are typically, sometimes they're red, Yeah, typically they're red. I looked around. I don't have any sort of circuit boards or anything that would be a good exemplar for, for the red non-conductive electrical isolating. But I wanted to just show you guys these constrained steel O-rings. I'll put a picture up of the where I bought it from on Amazon. I think it was 20 bucks. I think they're very neat. I think they would work fine for a, a gasket, an oil pan plug kind of gasket situation. This is not a great demonstration, but on the left we've got a regular O-ring. The center we have a, a copper crush washer, and on the right-hand side we have one of those metal bonded rubber gaskets. And the, you know what, we, what we've effectively done is split the difference. It's a, a middle ground, I would say. I think if you can't tighten things down, like Scott Crafter talked about the, the plastic gaskets and whatnot, if you really can't put a lot of tension on something, I, I would think that that this constrained o-ring would be would be a good option and then also if there's any pressure on the inside like the o-ring in the, in the hydraulic system there was nothing to keep the o-ring from blowing out it is just going to split and there's nothing you can do about it uh, as opposed to this metal bonded one on the outside that's going to sort of hold everything together so I'm not saying it's a panacea it's not going to fix out your problem in the world out there but it's, in, it's another option out there I think it's something to have in the arsenal uh, if you work on hydraulic stuff especially and uh, I, I'm so far the hydraulic cart's been working well but I do have another question 
this card is extremely handy, but my problem now is I can't get it the air out of the system, I'm guessing. I have no idea how to bleed this. And I've gone through the the manual and it says to bleed the hole on the side and it doesn't seem to work. The reservoir is full. I've tried the other cylinders. If anybody's got any idea on how a remote bottle jack hydraulic pump works, because this should go up another foot or so, I would appreciate any input on it. Again, I'm sorry for not getting great shots on this, but uh, but it really has been a, a troublesome thing to work on because it's so dangerous. You know, if you disconnect the hose and this thing comes down on you, it's not going to be very forgiving. Well, I've got you. Let me show you a couple projects that I've got coming up on the to-do list. I got two new tractors. Here's my first new tractor. This is a Peg Pergo mini tractor. I guess Target sells these. I got it out of the trash, the poor man's flea market, and it just had a dead battery. So I've done a couple modifications to it, and I think I'm going to make a dedicated video on this. I'm going to do. I'm going to add a reverse switch to it. I'm going to add. You know, a couple little knickknacks and give it a little bit more capacity, but that should be fun. Let me show you the other tractors. Here's my first new tractor. This is a Peg Pergo mini tractor. I guess Target sells these. I got it out of the trash, the poor man's flea market, and it just had a dead battery. So I've done a couple modifications to it, and I think I'm going to make a dedicated video on this. I'm going to do. I'm going to add a reverse switch to it. I'm going to add you know, a couple little knickknacks and give it a little bit more capacity. But that should be fun. Let me show you the other tractors. This is my new wheel horse. I have a 312-8, which is two horsepower less than this, that I really love. But I just came across this one for $300, and I couldn't, I just couldn't believe that it was wasn't a scam. The only thing that I've got going on with it is it's got this spring, the return spring. I don't know why that spring is there. It is not factory, so I've got to get in there and see what's what's wrong with it. But everything else is in remarkable shape. All the stickers, all the all the little buttons work and everything. It's it's fantastic. I didn't even know half of these things existed, like the safety guards. Keep your feet from getting sucked in and the mule drive. It's just I drove it onto the trailer, checked the oil, came home and mowed the whole yard with it. It's just been a great machine. My problem is when I I didn't need it because I have another one. This is my other one. Runs great, no problems. You know, it's a little rougher looking, but it's still in relatively good shape. It's been, you know, the hood could use a paint job, but but been a remarkable machine. So let me know if you guys are interested in seeing more about these tractors. I, I love these kind of things. I, I think they're just um, the last well-made machines out there. This is probably a mid to late 90s, I think is when they quit making these. But they're really good machines. Uh, I find them interesting. But, uh, but let me know in the comments if you want to see more about this stuff. So that's about it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.